It's Wednesday night, which means we've got Dr. Angela Jones here lounging on the couch trying to go back to your regular position. <laughs> we're, talk <laughs> we're talking love and relationships. We're talking the breakup you can't get over. What do you do when you just can't seem to shake that breakup? Yeah. Some people get almost stalkerish about it. I mean, they're like checking on you, calling you. You all right? They ain't or checking on you. <laughs> <laughs> they they, so they if, are calling you. If you, you can't seem to let go, mm -hmm. what's going on with you psychologically? first before we get into solutions the thing is it really depends on why y'all broke up mm -hmm. like who broke up with whom it, it that does matter so if you feel like you were side swiped and you had no idea this was coming usually that's a harder breakup to recover from so what's going on with them is this betrayal shock like the whole their whole life their schedule everything is just shattered so what's going on is like I said this betrayal but when you go to somebody who was the person that broke up you might have a sense of freedom. You might feel like, okay, I finally did it. But you also might feel a little guilt because you see that the other person is so hurt. And is there a danger of that betrayal, the person who was dumped, mm -hmm. becoming angry? Yes. And then when they become angry, it could come, become dangerous. It can. So the thing is, is that you, there's things to do after a breakup and there's things not to do, which is revenge. We always want to get revenge. We want to do something to the other person to make them feel the way we feel at that moment. But really, that's not going to do anything but make you feel worse because usually whatever you're doing for revenge is out of your character. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, like, what am I trying to get out of this? Do I really want to hurt that person? And what, what's going to happen after that? And it, it, I don't know what the revenge is, but I almost guarantee you could probably get sued for it, too. Mm -hmm. So you may just want to just chill out and not do anything at all. And for those who may, what we consider trying to make someone jealous by immediately picking up someone else as revenge or is that something different? That's part of revenge too. Like uh, I'll date your friend or I'll go, you know, date so <laughs> somebody your in your family. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, that's brother. called revenge dating, but uh -huh. also just trying to find somebody right after, which what we call it is rebounding, but you want to do it just so they can see that, oh, you know, I'm over you. And usually the only person that's going to hurt in that one, of course, is you, but you're going to hurt the other person because they're actually probably thinking that it's something serious. Now, if you're the one who has been dumped, mm -hmm. how do you deal with that mentally in order to get away from the damage and the hurt that you feel? I, the first thing I tell people to do is allow yourself to feel. Cause you know, when we get dumped or we, we're feeling pain, our first inclination is to like make the pain go away. Mm -hmm. You actually have to let yourself feel the sadness, the, the depression, the wondering, the loneliness. You have to allow yourself to be in that space, which means that you may need a little time to yourself. And if you don't know how to process it yourself, then you should probably talk to one, maybe two trusted confidants will go to a therapist and talk through it. But if you don't allow yourself to feel, it's gonna come out another way. For family and friends who may be monitoring that person who has been dumped, how much time should you give them? Because I've seen friends and family members who just go into a depression and it mm -hmm. lasts weeks and weeks and weeks. How long should it last? What's a safe amount of time? I can't really give a time. Cause like mm -hmm. if I was dating you for a couple of months, I might only need a day or two and then I'm gonna be <laughs> fine. But if somebody was dating somebody for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, or anything, yeah, people date that long. I'm not even talking about marriage. I mean, it, it, it becomes like a, a shake of reality. It's like an earthquake that happened because your whole life for a decade or two was with this other person. So you just feel kind of trapped and you don't know what to do. So the time frame, it, it, it really depends on the intensity of the relationship and the breakup. And in the last 20 seconds, those who are guilt written for dumping someone, mm -hmm. how do you address that and, and live a healthier life after? Make sure you dump that person for you. You didn't dump them because somebody else said, oh, you know, you shouldn't date her. Make sure you're doing it for your own personal reasons. Because if you're doing it for somebody else or you're doing it because you started dating somebody else, you're going to regret it later or you're going to feel guilty later. So ask yourself, why am I actually letting this person go and be solidified in that decision? All right, Dr. Angela Jones, thank you for joining us. If you need some help, don't hesitate to reach out to Dr. Jones, who is accepting new clients right now. You can find out more by visiting her website, Angela Jones, PhD. PhD.com. We'll be back after this.